Hi, and welcome back. So NMN and cancer are quite rightly a hot topic, especially when it comes to NMN accelerating the growth of a specific existing cancer. However, this latest study shows that NMN supplementation actually blunted the spread of a specific type of cancer. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this latest study on NMN and cancer has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Akadi Mazin and covers a study that was published on the 23rd of January 2023 in the journal Nature, link in the description below, where scientists found that raising NAD levels via supplementation with nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMN activated CERT1. That in turn dampened cancer cell metastasis. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. In 1906, William John Young and Arthur Harden discovered there was something special in liquid extracted from yeast that could boost the fermentation of sugar into alcohol. This special something is known today as NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. NAD functions as a coenzyme in our mitochondria allowing the creation of chemical energy that our bodies can use. Metabolic processes such as glycolysis, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria all rely on NAD in order to function. NAD is an abundant coenzyme that facilitates numerous processes in our body from energy production to DNA repair. Unfortunately, NAD levels decline with age and its supplementation via precursors, usually NMN or NR, nicotinamide riboside, has shown multiple health benefits in animal models and during human trials too. However, like many biomolecules, NAD is a double-edged sword, especially when looking into its self-contradictory relationship with cancer. Note there that I said it was NAD that was the double-edged sword and not NMN. On the one hand, NAD is used as a fuel by many types of cancer cells. And on the other hand, it can also boost anti-cancer immune responses. Other NAD dependent enzymes, such as the sirtuins and PARP, also seem to have a context dependent effect on cancer. This latest study looked into the effects of NAD on triple negative breast cancer, also known as TNBC. TNBC cells lack the three common receptors that are usually found on the surfaces of breast cancer cells. This in turn limits the full array of therapeutic options that are usually open to doctors. The researchers initially generated primary tumours by injecting HCC1937 cancer cells, a common model of TMBC, into the mammary fat pads of immune-compromised mice. Continuous treatment with NMN significantly impeded tumour growth and cancer metastasis. Similar results were obtained using actual TMBC cells taken from a cancer patient. The researchers then proceeded to study NAD metabolism in vitro, meaning in glass, so outside of their normal biological context, and found that NMN supplementation rapidly increased intercellular NAD levels as it usually does. While the treatment did not affect the proliferation of cancer cells, it slowed their migration and their invasion. RNA sequencing of tumour samples revealed that NMN supplementation led to the activation of genes involved in longevity regulating pathways and glutathione metabolism. It has been argued that glutathione is probably the most important antioxidants that humans produce. Some recent studies have shown that some protective effects of NAD might be attributed to its regulation of CERT1, a member of the sirtuin family. The researchers conducted analysis of several existing large databases and found that TMBC was associated with lower CERT1 levels and the mRNA expression of CERT1 was negatively correlated with the severity of breast cancer. Using this data, the researchers also showed that breast cancer patients with high sirtuin levels had longer overall survival and better relapse-free survival rates. 
Sirtuin 1 levels were also lower in high metastatic versus low metastatic TMBC cells. The invasion potential of TMBC cells was significantly decreased by two different SIRT1 activators, including resveratrol, a molecule popularized by Dr. David Sinclair's research. In this study, resveratrol proved to be a more potent downregulator of TMBC cell invasion than the second molecule, CAY10602. However, both compounds failed to affect TMBC cell proliferation rate. Next, the researchers genetically engineered TMBC cells to stably express SIRT1. Compared to the regular TMBC cells with impaired SIRT1 production, the in vivo models based on SIRT1 expressing cells produced significantly less lung metastasis. You may remember a lot of scaremongering a while ago saying that resveratrol didn't actually activate SIRT1. So good to see another study showing now that resveratrol does activate SIRT1. Since the NAD treatment upregulated the genes involved in glutathione metabolism, the researchers then turned their attention to oxidative stress. The production of reactive oxygen species, or ROS, which causes oxidative stress, was decreased by both NMN treatment and by SIRT1 overexpression. Those effects were repeated to some point by the ROS scavenger, NAC. Interestingly, previous research suggested ROS promoted metastasis in cancer. The researchers then discovered a downstream target of SIRT1 that may be responsible for its anti-cancer effects. The protein P66SHC is known to promote ROS production when it is phosphorylated, but SIRT1 can block this phosphorylation. When P66SHC phosphorylation was blocked by other means, the results resemble those of NMN supplementation and SIRT1 overexpression. In conclusion, NAD and SIRT1 have unclear context-dependent relationships with cancer. This study suggests that specifically in the context of triple negative breast cancer, raising NAD levels through NMN supplementation activates the SIRT1 medicated antioxidative stress response, which might prove useful in treating this stubborn subtype of breast cancer in the future and may also affect other cancers in a similar way. So if you're curious to know more about NMN, including where to buy it, and specifically from a reputable supplier, in my humble opinion, for quality third-party tested products at affordable prices, please take a look at Renew Bioscience and Do Not Age, although there are many other suppliers on the market. These two companies both offer the 10% discount if you use the My NMN discount code at checkout. That goes for all the longevity products on their site, including those that are included in their subscription service. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Some people get confused when we talk about NMN, NAD and cancer. Uh, NAD metabolism can cause cancers to grow more quickly. Uh, people think because NMN is an NAD precursor, NMN means more NAD, more NAD means a faster growing cancer. This study seems to prove the opposite of that. Um, as far as I'm aware, there have been no studies into NMN to see whether or not it starts a cancer or if NMN specifically actually speeds up any kind of cancer growth. Probably the reason that David Sinclair, when he's questioned on this, is on the side of caution and says, if you've got cancer, if you think you've got cancer, or if there's a history of cancer in the family, you should avoid taking any kind of NAD precursor.